Hi, I'm Dustin Berg with Pro AV School. In today's video, what I want to do is go through a video that I created for one of my courses, the TLDR method. And this video describes the residential framework that I created as an example for the course. So check this video out. Any of the links or anything mentioned in there, it's part of the course. So this is just kind of an overview of how it works. It's some good information to see how a, um, a framework could be built up with cross points and how it kind of all connects together. For more information about the course, go to tldrmethod.com. Here's the video. In this video, I'm going to describe how the TLDR residential framework is built and how it functions. I put this framework together because I needed a good example that could help me describe some of the concepts in the TLDR method course. In my programming journey, I've yet to find a project like this that is actually explained. My goal is to make this video and the framework itself something that will provide a lot of valuable insights and ideas for you. I also wanted something that you could use as a reference to see how a larger program might be built out. Since it was created, I was able to implement the concepts and some of the programming projects I've worked on myself. Now I should note that it wasn't my intention to build out and support a fully functional framework here to replace something like Pantex Adapt or even Adelite's Crescendo. I spent several weeks developing this, but a full, robust, commercially supported framework would have been many more months or even years of work for a whole team. With that being said, let's get into some details. The overall concept is best suited for a residential type system, where a touch panel can select a room and then adjust audio, video, and lighting for that room. We also provide a way to do source selection and control. You can have multiple touch panels, rooms, sources, and lights. The framework itself doesn't control the user interface directly. That is left up to the individual program. This allows things to be more loosely coupled following the TLDR philosophy I've talked about throughout the course. What this means is that you aren't tied to a certain look or feel of how the interface operates. The framework provides a way to connect to a room, adjust settings, and get resulting feedback. That being said, the example project included has logic to demonstrate how this might actually work. I created this overview diagram showing how the different modular components are connected together. The framework uses a lot of cross points to dynamically build a system based on the modules that are defined in the simple program. There is a lot here, so I'm going to explain it at a high level first and then go into more detail about each component afterwards. First of all, since we have all these cross points floating around, the IDs in the framework are in different ranges for different types of modules. This is the schema or outline of the IDs used. Green boxes represent control cross points and red boxes represent equipment cross points. The touch panel globals module essentially does a discovery of all the rooms, sources and lights defined in the system. This is provided to all touch panel modules so they can build a list of rooms, sources, and lights. The room modules are really the heart of the system and can be thought of as models of the room. I talk about that more in section two of the course. Current source, volume, and lighting are tracked and controlled for each room. They are configured with specific audio and video switchers as well as a list of lights. They connect out to these devices on startup and manage AV source selection volume, and lighting control for a room. The touch panel module dynamically connects and disconnects to the room modules to control the selected area. Multiple touch panel modules could connect and control the same room, for example, a mobile app as well as a physical touch panel. To build a system using the TLDR residential framework modules, you need a room, an audio switcher, a video switcher, and some light loads. You will also need a touch panel as well as the touch panel globals module. Let's look at the demo simple program to see how these are all set up. Starting with the TLDR room module, you need to give it a name. Then it needs an ID. I have set up a note on the valid range that can be used. These IDs correspond to the cross point ID. Inside the modules themselves, we use an analog scaler to add an offset that generates the proper cross point ID to connect to. Next, we have a startup volume percent for the room. Then we have an audio switcher and video switcher ID. 
The Lights section allows us to enter a comma-separated list of lights for the room. Lastly, the Allowed Sources list provides a way for each room to filter out sources from the touch panel that are not available to it. Under Devices, we have Audio Switchers and Video Switchers. These are pretty basic modules that contain one of the analog remapping modules that I talked about in Section 4 of the course. Each of these has an ID and a parameter for which output should be activated based on a given input virtual source. Note that we can have 1 to 99 audio switchers and 1 to 99 video switchers. Under the Interfaces section, we have the TLDR Touch Panel Globals module that amalgamates all the module data together for the Touch Panels modules. This has only one argument, an initialize trigger. The touch panel modules seem complicated, but really just provide a connection point for all the joins and data that need to go to and from the touch panel itself. Each touch panel has an ID from 1 to 99, as well as a default room ID to be set on startup. Sources have their own modules and an ID from 1 to 40. In this version of the framework, I didn't see a need to differentiate between audio and video sources. These modules are basically just connection points to output logic to the actual device driver. There is also a source name. This will get passed through the rest of the system so that it only needs to be defined here. I talk about code smell quite a bit throughout the course, and this is another example. If you want to change the name of a source, you only have to do it here in one spot. Lastly, each of the light loads has its own module with a name and ID and on level and off level. You are also provided with optional points to set the load on or off or raise and lower. This could be useful for a global control page or timed automation triggers. Thanks for watching that video from the TLDR method course. Again, like I said at the beginning, this was part of the course. It's an example program. I include the full source and I walk through the, all parts of it as part of the program. So you can find out more about that course at tldrmethod.com. I've also got uh, the TLDR clipboard utility that you can download when you sign up.